The material comes to us from various sources. This is from AgriPass, David Brown, this collection service for farmers. And this is the material as we get. We also take it from industry, the pharmaceutical industry. Where it's granulated, that means basically chopped up. And then when it's chopped up, it's blown into the top here, and then in fact into this mixture. This is a mix, a complete mix of all the different polymers and plastics. From there it's fed into the hopper up the top there, and then into the machine. Machine takes it on demand and keeps producing the noodles. What we do is mix the granulated material, goes into this machine where it's in fact densified and then turned into these noodles, as you can see. Like that. These come out soft but very hot. Then they go into this hopper where they shake, come out through here, where it's still fairly soft until we pour cooling water on, which solidifies. This is the finished product, solid but free draining. Steaming. Oh yes, it's hot. So, okay, I, I'm not uh, an industrialist. I don't understand how this works. How can you can get a load of very loose stuff being made into something like this? It's a compaction process, isn't it? That's the magic thing. What, tell me, what does it do in there? It rubs it all together. Ah, friction. Ah, okay. No heat applied, just friction. No heat. Machine provides the heat friction. Kinetic energy. Right. So this would go under like AstroTurf and things like that, would it? Yes, it would go under AstroTurf. It could even go under, or on uh, conventional turf pitches as a drainage material. Hi John, thank you very much for inviting me over to your car plant. It's been great to see the process in the in the noisy uh, room out there. So could you just sort of give us a little bit of background to the product and how it came about? Uh, the product was started some years ago. It was again solving a, a, a problem that I had on the farm, a drainage problem. All right, so you were a farmer originally. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. where you, that's, that's your right. roots. North Yorkshire farmer. farmer yeah. North Yorkshire farmer, okay. That's right. Um, and we solved the problem by using or utilising at the time waste plastics and straw. But straw, of course, did not lend itself to a commercial process. One, availability, and two, uh, consistency of product. And also finding out that there are, in fact, we produce in this country on average uh, about five, four to five million tonnes of waste mixed polymer plastics per annum. Right. Uh, some of it can be recycled, a lot of it is an increasing thing, There's a lot more being recycled than yeah, once, yeah. but a lot of the difficult ones cannot be recycled. The mixed polymers, uh, laminates, uh, those with in fact uh, other intru or inclusions in them that can't be recycled. So they just go to landfill? They would go to landfill or they'd be burned or incineration. Right, right. So we can take those polymers, which we do, uh, we granulate them, mix them to our own sort of recipes and whatever, mix the polymers, all the different polymers together. Even in fact in the different forms, you've got, say, you've got film and you've got heavyweight material. So we can mix those, right. put them together, as you saw up there, and put them into the product. And how did you, you know, because I come from a completely non-industrial background, you're coming from a farming background, um, how do you come up with something that's, you create some machinery that does this amazing thing? How does that happen? Uh, I was told it couldn't be done. And in fact, you'll see a lot of uh, articles that do say that you cannot recycle mixed polymer plastics. You can't, it depends on what you wanted to do with them. If you wanted to put them back into a different product or utilise them in a different way, you can't. And this is what we did, or what I did. 
And it took some years to because there was no machine out there that'll do it no. or a process, yeah. integrated process that would do it. Yeah. But what you can do, in fact, is take parts from other machines and other processes, combine them together. If you've got a little bit of knowledge, when I say I was a farmer, yes, I worked for five years in the plastics and rubber industry, so I had a fair background oh, okay. in plastics and rubber and what you could do with it. Also, in fact, being a teacher as well, I was a teacher of science and design technology. So I'd also got that background. Right. And basically, practical problem solving has been part of my life. And this was a problem that I had to solve, solve it on the farm. A civil engineering friend looked at it and decided that in fact, this was a good product that could be used. And he said, can you develop it into commercial process? It's taken a hell of a long time to do it having been told on several occasions by my betters that, no, you can't do that. Yeah. That, yeah, we did it eventually and put this product together, spotted exactly what I wanted when moving, you know, moving around plastics factories and put it together into this product, all the different part, component parts of the process to actually take mixed polymer waste plastics and turn it into the structure that we wanted. Yeah. Yeah, the Eureka Can you Mount. Yeah, your Eureka Mount. Can you describe yeah. that to us? Um, what was it like? Because it must have been after all those years of obviously trying and failing and trying and failing. And after all the frustration, yeah. and to actually get a process up running and doing, well, you t it's a great sense of elation when you do it. That you've followed all these blind alleys, you've gone down all these blanked off pathways, you yeah. have to retrace your steps after spending money, time, effort. And had negative and comments had from people. negative results. Yeah. And, but you've got to have that tenacity to keep going. Yeah. Step back, analyse your results, just as I was saying there about yeah. design, technology. Yeah. Look at it, learn from it, adapt, use and innovate. And what's great is that you're doing something that's environmentally sound. Absolutely. For every tonne of this that we take out of landfill or incineration, we make, in fact, a greenhouse gas emission saving of two tonnes. Amazing. Those are government figures. Yeah. So we're doing something positive with the product. But the beauty of the product as well, it also has, its use has an environmental impact. Yeah, tell us about those. But if you can imagine, this, we can actually, it's used for drainage, basically. Um, a problem we've had this summer, of course, a lot of people. Sure. Sustainable urban drainage systems. What we want to do, I mean, we're very sort of, I would say sort of backward in this country that we do not utilize one of the assets which we have, which is water. We put it all in the combined sewers and push it off all out to, out to sea. Yeah. And we put down concrete, tarmac, roofs, whatever, which in fact stops the water getting back down to the natural aquifers. Sure. This is why we have water shortages down in the south of, southeast of England. And the borehole levels are dropping for the simple reason we're not utilising the water we've got. Right. If we did this and there were more and more such projects going on in urban areas, then in fact we would be saving a fact, valuable commodity, which is water. By draining the land and by making the land more receptive to water, to say we don't want to dry it out, we want to drain the land, then in fact we'd get this, prevent these flash floods. Mm. That the water in fact, if you've got baked land, water will run straight off and into the rivers and streams and whatever. Again causing further flooding downstream. But if we drop that water back down or the land is receptive to the water, mm. then we retain it and mm. it's gradually released. Or in fact it goes back down, again as I said, to the natural aquifers. Mm. Brilliant. So legislation. It, a lot of things have changed now. At one time, you had the automatic right to put you, put water from any development into the combined sewers. Right. That right no longer link, exists. Right. You have to cope with your own water. This is why you have to have sustainable urban drainage systems within, say, an industrial site or whatever. They've got to cope with the water. They can't just put it into the sewers. Right. So what we can do with it is we can put it under a permeable block paving which will allow water to, in fact, instead of running off, going straight back down into the ground and soaking away. I've got some photographs if you want to see them. Photographs of it used under permeable paving. Also used on green roofs and green facades, which in fact, this is water attenuation, which will in fact hold water 
the plants use it. The plant, these polymers do have a recycled value as long as they are individual and separate polymers. If we take that for example, the milk container, that has got a recycled value, so does that. And if it's a plastics label, that probably has as well. But sorting and separating takes money. Yeah. These, any paper labels, glues, this sort of thing is all going to be removed it's cut at a cost. The beauty of our system, in fact, is we can mix these polymers in and providing it's benign contamination, no problem. Got local authorities all over the place that are being very specific about what kind of plastic yeah. they recycle. You have huge demand for your product. Oh, Why a building demand. A building, building demand. Yeah, yeah, huge yeah. building demand uh, and growing demand. So is there the potential for local authorities to work with Most you? Is that happening? or Potential for, well, the classic example that I quote is, in this situation, Scarborough waste was collected, brought here, we process it here in the factory in Scarborough and installed it on a sports pitch about 10 minutes down the road and it is now draining two sports pitches and doing a useful job. Scarborough waste, all processed locally. Yeah, yeah. Working on the, what we call the proximity principle. Yeah. That's how it works. Can I just sort of finally say, you've, you're using your, the, the product here for, in the building services, could you see a wider range of uses uh, for what you're creating here, or variants of it? Oh, yeah, very much so. Uh, when we started off, I mean, we started off just basically on the drainage material, and we've developed it from that into a growing medium. Um, it's even being looked at now for, as we actually can see from these photographs, growing seed hydroponically. So you can actually grow, a, lot, a number of our crops are grown hydroponically. And we have trials going on that now. Right. Uh, many different uses for it, water filtration, uh, the growing of denitrifying bacteria for water treatment, all these things, yeah, there's hundreds of different uses for it. It's a new material. But it's taken a long time to actually develop markets and it's still got a long way to go. And it's, but it's going all over the world at the moment it's and people are picking it up and using it and thinking, right. how else can we use this? Correct. And in fact, we had people here yesterday from Europe who found another use for it. Great. Well, thank you very much in enlightening us uh, to this fantastic new product that's environmentally sound. Absolutely. And uh, is a... Low energy. And low energy. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much, Sean. Really appreciate your time. Not at all.